All right, good afternoon. Um, our colleagues in the UN peacekeeping mission in Mali said today they are dismayed by the toll of the simultaneous terrorist attacks on a Malian G5 Sahel unit position in Bulkesi and the Malian armed forces in Mondoro that took place on September 30th and October 1st in central Mali. The mission condemns with the utmost energy these attacks uh, where on following a General Assembly session where security in Mali and, and the Sahel was given an important place on the agenda of several high-level meetings attended by heads of states in the region. The mission and all of us extend our deepest condolences to the governments of Mali and the grieving families. The mission wishes a speedy recovery to all those injured. Back here, the Security Council held an open meeting this morning on the theme of peace and security in Africa, mobilizing the youth towards silencing the guns by 2020. Addressing Council members, the Secretary General Special Advisor on Africa, Biense Gawanis, noted that nearly 20% of Africa's 1.2 billion people are between the ages of 15 and 24. She stressed that if the right investments are made and their social and political economic engagements recognized and nurtured, societies may reap a peace dividend. Ms. Gowanus pointed out that across Africa, youth are demanding urgent action and are making their voices heard. Young people are at the center of pro-democracy movements, effectively mobilizing, organizing, and leading, and clamoring for inclusive, accountable governance, youth participation, and economic opportunities for all. The Secretary General Special Representative for Iraq, Janine Hennis Pashkert, expressed grave concern today over the violence that accompanied some of the demonstrations in Baghdad and other governorates. She called for calm and deeply regretted the casualties among both the protesters and security forces. The special representative said that every individual has a right to speak freely in keeping with the law. She urges the authorities to exercise restraint in their handling of the protests to ensure the safety of peaceful demonstrate protesters while upholding law and order and protecting the people public and private property. And we have uh, an update from Haiti today on the humanitarian situation. Security incidents and roadblocks have disrupted the UN and NGOs humanitarian programs. Our colleagues report that the health sector is probably the most impacted, with hospitals facing significant challenges to operate. Fuel shortages, lack of safe water, and other essentials are also affecting orphanages, civil protection units, and other emergency services, which are also functioning, functioning with limited capacity. Many schools have been closed uh, for the past two weeks, leaving an estimated 2 million children and young people without any access to education. At the beginning of the year, 2.6 million Haitians were food insecure. Should the current situation continue, our humanitarian colleagues warn that thousands of people already facing the consequences of severe food insecurity could be further impacted, with food assistance unable to reach them. UN agencies and their partners are seeking to resume response efforts as soon as possible. And a couple of notes from our agency colleagues. The High Commissioner for Refugees, Filippo Grande, just concluded a four-day visit to Mexico, where he met with refugees and asylum seekers in the northern and southern parts of the country. Mr. Grande listened to their stories about the violence, abuse, and persecution they suffered at the hands of criminal gangs, which forced them to flee their countries. And the Director General of the World Health Organization, Dr. Tedros, just wrapped up a visit to the Bahamas, where he was assessing the health impact of Hurricane Dorian. During his visit, he went to Abaco and Grand Bahama Islands, where most households and infrastructure, including health care facilities, were completely destroyed. The health sector in Abaco and Grand Bahama suffered a substantial blow with equipment and medical supplies destroyed, electrical and water supplies interrupted. In Grand Bahama, three health clinics have been destroyed, two in Abaco are now gone. WHO has deployed 20 staff members and coordinated the mobilization of five emergency medical teams for the response. The agency has also mobilized a million dollars from the contingency fund for the hurricane response. Dr. Tedros reiterated WHO's commitment to support the government and the people of Bahamas for the recovery of the health system. And the High Commissioner for Human Rights, Michelle Bachelet, will be conducting an official visit to Malaysia from the 4th, uh, the 4th and 5th of October, marking this the first ever visit by UN Human Rights Chief to the country. 
During the visit, she will meet with the Prime Minister and other high-level government officials, as well as the National Human Rights Institution, Civil Society, the National Bar Association, and the diplomatic community. She also plans to visit an alternative learning center for her Rohingya refugees. And the World Food Program uh, announced today the launch of Stop the Waste, a global campaign to raise awareness about huge amounts of edible food that is discarded daily. As part of the campaign, WFP has enlisted top restaurateurs and celebrity chefs from around the globe to join the movement by making their own to, uh, pledge to hashtag Stop the Waste. While there's enough food in the world to feed everyone, one-third of the 4 billion metric tons of food produced each year is lost or wasted, costing the global economy nearly $1 trillion annually. At the same time, war and unrest are for forcing more people to flee their homes than at any time since the Second World War, making it difficult for millions of people to grow their own food or buy it at affordable prices. And lastly, another note from UNHCR. The uh, agency announced the Nansen Refugee Award winner is a lawyer whose work has supported the efforts of the Kyrgyz Republic to become the first country in the world to end statelessness. Through his organization, Fergana Valley Lawyers Without Borders, uh, Azibek Ashurov has helped over 10,000 people gain the Kyrgyz nationality after they became stateless following the dissolution of the Soviet Union. That includes some 2,000 children. And I shall stop there. Bitul. Thank you, Steph. Uh, as you're aware, today marks the first anniversary of the murder of Saudi journalist Jamal Khashoggi. And uh, UN Special Rapporteur Agnes Kalamar says the Secretary General can and should do more. So the question is, can the Secretary General do more and will he do so? Look, the, the Secretary General, I think, has spoken out very clearly on condemning the killing of Mr. Khashoggi uh, for full light to be made of, um, of what happened to him and to make sure that those responsible are held to justice. Um, the legal issues have not changed. Uh, there is no uh, mandate for the Secretary General, legal basis for the Secretary General to launch an investigation without a mandate from the legislative bodies. Uh, it is up for those member states uh, to take these things into consideration. Yes, sir. Two questions for you. Um, first one um, is about North Korea's latest missile launch, mm -hmm. which is, it seems, uh, the missile that um, potentially could go the furthest of any that they've mm -hmm. launched this year. How concerned is the Secretary General, and does he believe the Security Council now need to meet on this matter? Of course, the launch is extremely, is very concerning. Uh, the launch of a ballistic missile is yet another violation of Security Council resolutions. I think ahead of what we've learned of the working level, uh, resumption of working level talks between the DPRK and the United States later this week, the Secretary General hopes that both parties work to sustain these talks and to make progress on the implementation of the June 12th, 2018 uh, US DPRK joint declaration towards denuclearization and sustainable peace on the peninsula. And my other question, I see the statement that has been issued um, in Baghdad by the UN uh, about the, 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 the violence there and the protests and mm -hmm. the use of live ammunition. Grave concern was the words. Given there is another circumstance elsewhere in the world in the last 48 hours where live ammunition has been used, does the Secretary General have grave concern too about the situation in Hong Kong? Look, uh, if there are two uh, different situations in the sense that uh, the UN has a political presence and a political mandate uh, in Iraq. The Secretary General, as a matter of principle, supports the right of people to demonstrate peacefully and always encourages security forces to show restraint. So just to answer that question, does he have grave concern, those words, about Hong Kong, or is it different when a permanent member of the Security Council no, is I don't involved? think it has an issue to do with the permanent members. Edie, and then Maria. As a follow-up um, on North Korea, mm -hmm. Um, did the Secretary General meet with the representative of 
the DPRK on the sidelines of the GA, and can you give us any elaboration on his message? Uh, it's, you know, my, I think all our brains are a little fried from the General Assembly. As I recall, there was no formal, uh, uh, formal bilateral, but if, if I'm wrong, I'm sure the correction gods will get to me. Maria. Thank you, Steph. Um, so the Russian Deputy Foreign Minister Sergei Rabkov was quoted on Monday saying that he expected more reaction, more clear reaction from UN Secretariat on the visa problems created to Russian delegation. Thirteen members of Russian delegations were not given visa on time to participate in General Assembly events this year. So... Um, do you have any new reaction on that? And uh, also there is a suggestion announced by Russian officials to move the first committee to Vienna or Geneva to other place from New York. So I wonder if you received any official request for that. Uh, as far as I understand it, we have now received an official uh, letter from the Russian Federation uh, regarding the visa issues. Uh, we've received the letter, we're studying it, and take whatever action is appropriate from the Secretariat's end. I have, I'm not aware, nor have I seen any official uh, um, correspondence regarding uh, moving the, the committee, but obviously any uh, shift in the location of a work of a General Assembly committee will be a decision taken by member states. Wait. Uh, Stefan, uh, regarding the situation in Mali, uh, a minister from the Malian government has said that uh, the UN had uh, been uh, um, intervening militarily uh, in Bulkesi in support of the uh, G5 uh, Sahel force, as well as the French uh, forces of the Barkhane operation. Can you confirm this uh, involvement of UN troops? And could you also elaborate on possible uh, consultation going on in the Malian capital uh, with the UN? No, I'm not able to confirm uh, details of any military operation from our end. Obviously, uh, the leadership of the UN in, in Mali is in discussions with with the Malian uh, government, we will do whatever we can to help to support uh, to support the government, uh, and uh, the mission is obviously there uh, in that respect. James, hi, thanks, uh, Steph. For that. Thanks so much. Um, a better ask you a question about Khashoggi, mm -hmm. the murder, and whether or not the Secretary General mm -hmm. could do more. Uh, you made the standard case, which is that you support uh, account, a quest mm -hmm. for accountability and justice, and that's all well and good. But there's this one organization which falls directly under the Crown Prince. It's called the MISC Foundation, with which the United Nations has a partnership. There was that event just before or during the GA that the UN Youth Envoy pulled out of. Mm -hmm. um, but the relationship between the UN and MISC continues. There's a UNESCO MISC event in Paris in November, I think. Um, and the MISC uh, is, uh, um, it comes directly under Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman and the head of the organization, he received four phone calls um, from the hit squad in the consulate in Istanbul at the time that Khashoggi was being murdered. So there are very questionable ties between, uh, about the UN's relationship with this organization. Other um, organizations, the uh, Gates Foundation pulled out of their relationship with MISC. Uh, is it even being considered that the UN shouldn't be associating itself with this organization to send a message about what's no, right I, and what's I, wrong? I, I hear your, your statement. I have no, uh, no further update on, uh, on the relationship between, uh, with the MISC Foundation, which, as you know, has been a relationship that's been going on for about two and a half years now. Nabil. Uh, Mr. Peterson uh, said he will announce uh, the the names of uh, the uh, constitutional committee uh, for Syria soon maybe uh, there are some lists uh, in the media on the internet from both sides the government and the opposition is the list confirmed and do you expect him to make it public before the beginning of the meetings? He said he would make it public. I would encourage, uh, and I assume it'll be just before, sometime or a little bit before the, the start of the meeting, I would encourage people to be patient and wait for the list as it is issued by him, as opposed to lists that may be floating around the interweb. And do you know if uh, all members are invited and uh, have they confirmed 
their uh, participation in I the don't know if they've all been if all have confirmed but obviously uh, they've all been invited yes ma'am thank you Stefan I just want to know does the secretary general um, encourage Security Council reform, or does he? Is there anything, any statements he have as far as that, I think or anything he can do? This Secretary General, as many other Secretary Generals before him, have talked about the need for Security Council reform, but that is uh, one reform that is firmly in the hands of the member states, and especially the members of the Security Council. So, uh, voila, Betul. Uh, Steph, I might have missed a question on Cyprus uh, regarding the meeting between uh, the Secretary General and the Turkish Cypriot mm -hmm. leader. Uh, have you had any remarks or a readout no, we, of that we, meeting? We should, and, uh, we should a readout uh, right after the meeting. Uh, the Turkish Cypriot leader after that meeting said that the SG would uh, take an initiative to convene a meeting either between the uh, two leaders or uh, a meeting uh, five plus one, including the guarantor countries. And he talked about a date either uh, October or November. Uh, do you have a deadline Not, for that? Nothing that I can confirm at this point. But if you didn't get the readout, that's a problem because I know we issued it. Uh, thank you. Same time tomorrow for even more excitement.